Hey there guys, what's happening? Uh, now, first off, I just want to say, no, my title's not lying. No, my thumbnail is not lying. Because the Chinese Remnant is normally not in Fallout New Vegas, but courtesy of a wonderful mod called A Tale of Two Wastelands, this challenge is possible. At the time of this recording, I have actually completed the Let's Play that I'm working on, and I'm just uploading an episode every day or two. And that gives me ample time to work on this series right here. Eventually, we will go back to vanilla Fallout New Vegas. But for the time being, trying to beat Fallout New Vegas as fast as we possibly can as a Chinese remnant sounds like a good time to me. Now, in order for us to get this to work, we have to console command everything that's available to us as a Chinese remnant. Going off of the list right here, we actually have several different ones. I'm going to go with the Chinese Remnant Captain because it has the most weapons available to it. And yes, I did download a cosmetic ghoul mod specifically for this. Now, you might think that we're trying to be in character here. Not really. This series, Faction Warriors, is about trying to beat the game as fast as possible with various units. But it's not so much about speed. This isn't a real speed run. We're going to have a very different route. In addition to going fast, we are also going to try to engage in as few battles as possible. I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? It goes hand in hand. If you're trying to go fast, you're trying to avoid whatever battles you can, right? Now, in addition to this not being a typical speed run, you saw our special allocation earlier. We're going with a very specific set of tag skills and traits as well. Tag skills are determined by how well we can fight what our best weapon is. Chinese assault rifle and the officer sword are both great, but I think the sword's a little bit better. And as for traits, well, skilled is great because we want to try to get to speech maxed out as fast as possible. And Logan's loophole, it's really great for these kinds of challenges where they're just kind of one-off videos that we're not going to be playing in the long term. However, there is a very specific reason why I chose Logan's loophole, and that will become apparent a little bit later on in the run here. So we can go ahead and console command in all of our stuff. I had loaded up a pre-existing character just to test out the commands to make sure I got them right because... When you have Tell It Two Wastelands, the code's a little different for in inserting Fallout 3 items. And as strange as it might sound, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Sunny Smiles and we're going to do the first part of the tutorial quest. Now, of course, we can't use the varmint rifle that comes with it in combat. However, for the purposes of the tutorial, it's fine because, I mean, it's not like Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps can fight back. Although, I'd say they're still tougher than the NCR heavy troopers. But the reason why we want this specifically is because upon completion of the tutorial, that will get Joe Cobb to appear for us, and he is extremely important for this series. Also, he's cool. Now, before we head over to the Prospector Saloon to talk to Joe Cobb and get him out of the saloon, selling to Chet here, we gotta try and get as many bottle caps as we can, because we need to pass that credit check in order to get into the strip. Now, with our speech check, we could just go to Mick and Ralph's, pass the speech check there to get the fake passport for 500 caps, but that, that does waste a little bit of time. It's faster to go this way. And by the end of the run, in preparation for Hoover Dam, we are going to have to prepare as much as possible, because the Kenturians there, they hit a little bit hard. Speaking of minimum battles, though, here in the school, we have to fight the Mantises here. This is required, not necessarily because they're hard or anything. They don't, they grant very little XP. But on our way out, you're going to see here in just a sec. And the reason why we want the Mantises dead is because if the Mantises are after us and we're in caution, by the time we get to Cobb, he will be aggroed technically, but he'll run away. And the reason why we want to kill Joe Cobb is because we want the stealth. Boy, we have two and we need both of them for this run. Now, Joe Cobb, I don't count as a battle because we do ambush him, effectively assassinating him and killing him before he can even fight back. That doesn't count as a battle. However, as we make our way over to Hidden Valley, the first of the many fast travel points we're going to need to get very early for this run. First Powder Ganger is gone, and we'll dispose of the inept second one. Now, this is required for us because, in Tell It To Wastelands, the Fallout New Vegas economy is balanced, must be said. But we need the items from the Powder Ganger so that we can sell them and work towards our 2,000 cap credit. And here, not only are we going to get Hidden Valley on our fast travel, but we also want to kill off the Rad Scorpions here. Not only do they drop the glands, which sell for about 18 caps a pop, they do provide us with plenty of experience points, just enough to get us to level 2, in fact. Our level up skill points go into speech, and we'll take Confirm Bachelor so that we can get 10% extra damage against male units. I don't think we're going to be fighting any female units in this run, so yeah, 10% extra damage, we're so taking that. And as soon as we discover Hidden Valley, what we'll do is we'll pop up our pit boy, we will fast travel back to Good Springs, go up north, we'll get to the cemetery, 
A little bit of XP always helps. And it doesn't hurt to get the snow globe as well. We can turn that into Mr. House's Securitron for some extra caps when we get there. But the reason why we're coming this way is we want to go north. Now, in a normal playthrough, going this way at level 1 would be suicidal. There are a bunch of Cazadors here, and they would wreck us in record time. However, thanks to one of the two stealth boys we picked up early, we can sneak right past them. And then we can hug this little side of the mountain here and make our way all the way to Red Rock Canyon. We need Red Rock Canyon because once we get Yes Man later, we can scratch that off of our little checklist. Now, I've heard that all you have to do is just make contact in Red Rock Canyon and the criteria is satisfied. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but okay, yeah, we'll, we'll try that, I guess. It's this path. You saw us pick Logan's Loophole at the start of the challenge here. This little runt is why I want Logan's Loophole. Well, one of two reasons, actually. Because Logan's Loophole doubles the duration of chems and other effects. And included in that list of effects is the Stealth Boy. If we didn't have Logan's Loophole, we could make this, but our Stealth Boy would have dropped much earlier on. Without Logan's Loophole, it would drop right around Bonnie Springs. If you're fast enough like we were there, it would be just after. But better to be safe than sorry. We don't want to trigger any of the raiders hold up in Bonnie Springs. We can run away from them, but they are going to hurt us quite a bit. And hey, speaking of raiders, you might be surprised where our next area is. The area we have to uncover. And it's going to be our third required battle of this run here. Now, we know that the fiends are pretty tough, especially the leaders, and Cook Cook absolutely is no exception. However, we have to get past him if we want to get through here safely, and to do that, we can take our Chinese assault rifle and gun down Queenie in cold blood, and watch as Cook Cook goes ham on his fellow fiends. Now, that's a fun little trick that you learn in-game from, I believe it's Major Daughtry at Camp McCarran, whenever you're hunting down the fiends and you ask him for a hint on how you can bring down Cook Cook, Cook Cook, in my opinion, is the hardest because he's got heavy metal armor, he has a flamer, an incinerator, and for some reason he has a 45 auto pistol. I mean, we're level 1 for goodness sakes. That's a little, uh, a little early for that weapon, don't you think? Now, this may surprise you, my dear viewer, but we won't be getting into combat again for quite a while. Again, for the earlier parts of our run, we want to get all of the required fast travel points so we can go as fast as possible. And getting these fast travel points also helps us avoid the Legion hit squads when they start coming after us. And while we make our way to that next fast travel point, it's El Dorado Substation, by the way. If you're familiar with going the independent route, yeah, that's not much of a spoiler, because if we want to go fast, that is the fastest way to beat the game, is to go with Yes Man. Uh, but while we're en route, let's, um, let's get to know each other a little bit here. I'm Rosador of Midlothian Odyssey. I absolutely love Fallout, big fan of the series. I started with Fallout 3, I suspect many people have. And yeah, sure, it's it's not the best one of the bunch, but I enjoy it. I mean, I have a whole, I have a Let's Play I just finished where a good chunk of the game took place in Fallout 3. Big fan of the Capital Wasteland. Well, the main story of Fallout 3, in my opinion, is a little blunt force trauma, but the Capital Wasteland itself, I always enjoy exploring it. And here in the Mojave, no exception. Always have a great, great time in the Mojave Ways, and my favorite Fallout game is the first one. I didn't play 1 and 2 until much later, and very glad that I did. Played 4, had a lot of fun with it. Far Harbor was especially awesome. Played Tactics, enjoyed it quite a bit. The only one I haven't played yet is that, um, that PlayStation 2 one, is it? Brotherhood of Steel, the one that kind of looks like a Baldur's Gate game? But yeah, let me know what your favorite Fallout game is in the comments section below. I'd love to hear it. And speaking of things I love, Eldorado Substation, got it, we're gonna be coming back here a little bit later, gonna fast travel back to the NCR sharecropper farm, and then we're going to make our way to the Boomers of Nellis next. Now, there is a chance we can encounter a stray fiend on the way. If if it does attack us, if we see it, yeah, we'll fight it. Because it's gonna it's gonna give us chase for quite a while. But in addition to going to Nellis, we want to get the Gunrunners on our Fast Travel Pit Boy map. We want to get Freesight, of course, because going there is mandatory for the story. Crimson Caravan, New Vegas Clinic. The XP we get from discovering new places does add up, although we are subtracted by just a little bit thanks to Skilled. Field Shack's good for that discovering XP, the loot inside, and my absolute favorite, our star here... George boy and the reason why we want this guy gone is well he has a speech check we can pass for a little bit of XP and also in the story he's kind of a prick because he tries to get you killed that's why he wants your bottle caps that's what that's my takeaway speaking of bottle caps you saw 427 that's just over a fifth of what we need to get into the new Vegas strip 
A Georgia boy gives you some really obscure directions on how to get to the boomers and Nellis, but really, just hug the left and hope for the best and hope that the boomers have crappier aim than usual. I say their aim's bad, but we took quite a bit of damage getting in here. Of course, when I run my mouth, they actually are accurate when I'm recording. Having cleared the artillery barrage, we'll get taken to Mother Pearl, and two things that are important in here. Number one is the 20 speed check we can get for a little bit of extra experience points. And because the boomers just leave, and Pearl usually just goes and takes a nap, even though a complete stranger's in her house, we can rob her blind, take the combat armor, take the helmet, get the first aid boxes for the healing, and loot the lockers for the missiles and other ammunition that we can sell to fill our pockets with some of that ching-ching, baby. And now, at our level, the Vendertron here at the Gunrunners isn't going to have enough caps to barter with. That's okay, he does have quite a few. And I find that Blake is always an excellent one. Blake over at the Crimson Caravan, he's always an excellent vendor to barter with. No matter what your level is, he always seems to have quite a bit of caps. He has a ton of useful supplies. And I swear to God, I did not plan this. Exactly 2,000 caps? I mean, honestly, we should be a bit over. I did spend a little bit too much when I was bartering with Trudy at the start of the challenge. Uh, but hey, even if we were a few caps off, well, next up is Freeside. Our man Dixon here, also very useful. Typically, I would barter with this guy, but since we have over 2,000 caps, we can just take him out and take pretty much all of his inventory that he would have to sell to us, in addition to his own bottle caps. I was trying to be selective with what I looted. I accidentally hit the A button, so that did waste a little bit of time. On our way to the strip, to the security checkpoint, we will be getting into three separate battles with some free side thugs, but there's actually a fourth one that we're going to need for our routing. I say that, though, um, Old Ben seems to do us a real favor here. He takes out the free side thug for us. Well, that's very nice of him, but we're going to teach him what it means to be a good Samaritan. We're going to take out Old Ben. We get a little bit of experience points for doing this, but the 44 Magnum he has on him does sell for a fair bit of caps. Just in case we need it for later on, it's always good to have it. And of course, we can't use that 44 in combat, as the Chinese Remnant does not have a 44 Magnum at its disposal. Now, I do make a bit of a mistake here. Yes, going to the Omeritas to talk to the receptionist does get that off of our checklist, and I do beeline it over onto the Wet Glove Society to talk to Mortimer. That's all you have to do for the Wet Glove Society's Yes Man checklist. I should have gone to Mr. House first, because what we want to do here in this particular run is unlock the, do the uh, diplomatic option to talk to Swank. That way, in a normal playthrough, we could present him with evidence. But since we have an awesome speech check, we can just talk our way past Swank. For that check, we need 15, 30, and 45, respectively. Just gotta make sure you get the right dialogue option with Mr. House to unlock it, and then we'll beeline on over to the tops. Actually, now that I think about it, I should have made our Chinese Remnant female, so I could have gone straight to Benny and gone with the Black Widow option. But hey, it's our first run, you know, just trying to get our routing situated. Still doing great, I say. Oh, and when I say go fast, I'm going strictly by the in-game clock here. You know, just further emphasis that this is not an official speedrun. I'm pretty sure the official speedrunning route is nothing like this. I actually don't know. Now, in addition to the experience points we get for each speech check, th getting this with Swank allows us to have our weapons back because we will need to kill Benny when we get him up at his suite. And if at all possible, it's better to kill him at range. That way we can not waste time with the dialogue options, scrolling through the dialogue boxes with him whenever we get too close to him. That does initiate, uh, that does initiate talk with him. And just like with Joe Cobb, this does not count as a battle because we kill him before combat starts. With Benny down, let's go find Yes Man, and we have to get specific dialogue options for him to get him to appear outside of the tops when we're ready to meet up with him. And just in case you're curious, no, we're not going to sit through the sequence where he powers up the Securitrons to Mark II status, the ones in the strip, anyway. I figure that it adds nothing of value to the run, because, I mean, all we're doing is sitting in there and watching an in-game cutscene. Nothing for us to see. At level 6, we're super close to speech 100, which is awesome. Now, this might surprise you, but Wolpez here, he's another character we're going to kill off straight away, because he does give us 27 experience points. Uh, the Gambler suit, yeah, I guess we can sell it if we absolutely have to, but it's the experience points that we want, and we don't care about making the Legion hostile to us, because we're never going to go to the fort. And now with the Platinum Chip in hand, we can pay Mr. House a good old visit. Thanks to the Platinum Chip, we bypass the hard science check that would normally be on the terminal here. We'll slip in the Platinum Chip and slip on behind the curtains to meet a, um, whatever he is. 
Now, contrary to his appearance, Mr. House is a super old and malnourished human, although he could certainly fill the role for a Tales of the Crypt Keeper audition. Oh, God, I'm old enough to make that reference. Ay, ay, ay. I do like the context of this, however. We have a Chinese remnant who survived the pre-war, taking out a major American figurehead who is also from the pre-war. We don't do anything in character in this series. Everything is purely mechanical, but the context is still kind of fun to think about. So, once Yes Man is installed in the terminal here, it turns out that we had to do more than just discover Red Rock Canyon to get the Great Cons checked off our list. I kind of thought so, but hey, no problem. We just fast travel back there, we can talk to Papa Com, exhaust the options, and then we'll go to the Brotherhood of Steel. We are going to do the first quest for them. The first quest will knit us a little bit of experience points, so no problems there. Thankfully, all we have to do to Ranger Dobson is pass a 50 speech check to get him to go away. I mean, we could certainly kill him and get the XP, but again, we're trying to go fast, and the speech check gives us experience points as well. And if you're curious, we cannot fast travel back to Hidden Valley. We have to walk back because we got the bomb collar attached to us. Now, what makes tracking down Ranger Dobson kind of annoying is that he has a set patrol. Sometimes he's outside of the bunker, sometimes he's inside of it. At the rate we're going, obviously, you can see he is outside. That does waste a little bit of time, unfortunately. And just to show you that we can't fast travel as we make our way back, I'm going to open the pit boy, attempt to fast travel, and you can see that, nope, we sure can't. You see that sad vault boy at the top left-hand corner of our screen? Now, next up is my absolute favorite. We have to go back to Eldorado substation, and not only is this going to save us time fast traveling, but we're avoiding the hit squad from the Legion that has most definitely been sent after us at this point. And the reason why I love this so much is that you just fast travel there, run inside, slap on that terminal, run back outside, and then fast travel back, even though the NCR is like, well, don't you go in there. And they're just trying to wag their fingers telling you no, but they won't do anything about it because they suck. I mean, you're seeing it on screen right now, like, I'd make a joke, but let's be honest, you've already made it in your head. With the world's easiest errand completed, we go back to Yes Man, and we're already at the final battle. This is pretty sweet, although I have my reservations about how well we'll do. I mean, we'll definitely kill the Great Cons real fast, but the Kentarians are a whole different ball game. And yes, I'm saying Kentarians because that's how the Legionaries pronounce it, just like Kaiser over Caesar. Anyway... Well, I say we take out the Great Cons with our Officer Sword and doing super awesome damage to these guys. The Officer Sword is really great against lightly armored units. Got a couple of useful chems off them as well. It'd be super cool if we could use the right shotgun, but nah. Up first is the first wave of Kenturians, and our damage is passable, although we're taking a lot more damage than we should be. I mean, we're level 7. These guys are hitting kind of hard. But hey, that's fine, no problem at all. We take out the Kentarians with the help of our Securitron so we can make our way down. Now, that Vats kill is pretty nice. Does waste a little bit of time, but melee does double damage in Vats mode, as far as I know, so definitely good that we did that. Honestly, I just hope that we didn't underprepare for the final battle, because that would suck. Now, after putting down the Prime Legionnaire, we don't have to fight everything out here. In fact, our next required fight is going straight for the absolute most hilarious unit in this game. The NCR Heavy Trooper. Now, picture this, if you will. You have procured Brotherhood of Steel Power Armor. Now, rather than teaching your troopers how to use it and make the full use of its benefits, let's just strip everything out of the power armor that makes it awesome. So we have this giant hunk of metal in the freaking desert. And that's the NCR Heavy Armor. You know, I meant to use the Bleak Venom in this fight because that would have just torn through them like butter, somehow. But I didn't, and still, we creamed these guys. Now, I did make a bit of a mistake. I went the wrong way. I went the way that you would go if you were turning on the generators. No big deal. This is a great time for us to see how much damage we deal. Taking out these NCR troopers, we'd have to fight them on the way out anyway. Might as well do it here, and that damage we're dealing is, uh, less than optimal. It has me not really liking our odds against the other side, the, what is it, the west side where the Kentarians are. Anyway, when we push this button, the generator explodes. That's neat. So we'll go ahead and cut straight to the second wave, and, um, yeah, judging by the damage we're dealing to the NCR troopers, we're gonna use our second stealth boy here. Thanks, Logan's loophole. Well, as we sneak by the Kentarians, we can get a little glimpse of what they're using to see why they're dealing a lot of damage, and... Wow, anti-material rifles at level 7? Well, okay. 
did the Legion get buffed in Tale of Two Wastelands? Because it really feels that way. They made mincemeat of those Securitron Mark Twos. It's, uh, it's a good thing we went with this option, because we would be Dunyan Rings extra large. Supersize it, Cap'n. Well, if nothing else, you guys have seen just how freaking awesome Logan's loophole is. No way would our Stealth Boy still be up if we didn't take that. So, next up, we're going to go ahead, drop a nice healthy save right here. Open up our Pit Boy, use our Meaning People's Magazine to get our speech to 100, and then pass the speech check with Lanius because we're trying to go fast, and honestly, I wouldn't try fighting him anyway, not with how poorly we did outside. We'll go ahead and button mash our way past this, make our way to Oliver. Thanks to Logan's loophole, our magazine will last for a little bit longer. So when we get to Oliver, thankfully when we're talking to him, the magazine's duration doesn't expire. Although he needs to learn how to put his hat on. What a dork. And there we have it. We have completed our first successful Tale of Two Wastelands Faction Warriors run. That's cool. And one hour, four minutes... And 11 seconds for our total time. That's pretty awesome. And you see it on screen. Next up's gonna be the Tunnel Snake, a much more frail unit. And I'll see you at that episode. See you later. Bye.